Good morning. Back for another one. Feeling a little throaty this morning, but it's bright and early. It's just at six six thirty right now. Um, got up a little bit late, so I'm not feeling great. But uh, I'm gonna get this brisket done today. I'm gonna do it on the master belt because I just don't have time to mess with the offset today. But I'm gonna be working on my new offset, so I'll give you all a good update on where I'm at on that too. Um, only thing different I'm gonna do today: cook at two seventy five, fast side down. I'm gonna do an injection. I've never done a brisket with a beef injection before. What I'm gonna do this one, I was gonna make my own. My buddy called me up and he said, you gotta try that Cosmos uh, injection. It's, a, it's the best. So what I'm gonna do is use half of what he gave me, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of beef broth, stir that all up. And I picked up this here, this Ofargo injector. It's, got, it's pretty nice for 20 bucks on Amazon. It's got three different uh, needle injection needles you can get. So really small, medium, and then a really large one. So anyways, get this thing injected. Smoker's already going, gonna get it tossed on there. Fill this thing almost all the way up, I'm gonna stir it up. They say be careful when you're injecting brisket, because that shit can go everywhere. I just added a tablespoon of garlic to this just to add a little more flavor. I don't know if it's good or not. All right, I put the plunger back in, screwed it back in, pulled it to the top, took the needle out, and then put the, the juice in there. So that's how you gotta do it. I'm just gonna go around, kind of make little lines here and watch it swell up. I watched a video a while back that Pitmaster Henry, Henry Sue or Harry, Harry Sue, he said you push a little in till you see it plump up and then stop. Oh, that sucks. They get the ankle better. You want this has three holes on it, so you want to make sure all of them are under the skin or under the meat. If it's not, it'll squirt on you. Oop, that one. See that one went through through. Okay. Learning process here, boys. Oop, see, just not quite. There, there we go. Yep, all right. I'm gonna do one more of these. I'm gonna get it thrown on the grill. Okay, it's in about two and a half hours. I'm gonna go ahead and peek at this real quick, see where we're at. So, um, sitting at 275 pretty strong. I might spray the top a little bit here and there, but I think you get a lot of your, your uh, you bring that back when you wrap it up. So I'm not too concerned with it, but See, it's cooking pretty good. That fat's already starting to render down really well. Cooking out here today <laughs> by the trampoline in the back of the yard. Got my other smoker here, my grill there. We got this all tore out. Now we're waiting on HOA approval to get a big patio put in. So I'm gonna have this whole corner over here to myself, have all my cookers set up there, build a countertop and have a nice little space out here for it. But hot tub in the middle of the yard, that's pretty nice, isn't it? <laughs> big pile of stuff for the deck I tore out but things are coming around. So this will probably have to go till about 4.30 today. So once it's done, we'll be checking back in. All right, quick update on the smoker while that brisket's cooking. But as you can see, it's really coming along a lot further than it was like two weeks ago, all three weeks ago. Um, I'll turn this around. I'll show you what I've all, all I've done. Uh, keep in mind, I'm still a novice welder. I don't claim to be the fucking best, but like I say, I sure ain't the worst. So I just welded up this smoke um, collector and uh, chimney here. Um, as you can see, I used two different techniques here. On this one, coming across, I did like the curse of ease. And on this one over here, I did the small, I did the quick drag and then the slow back and the quick drag and the slow back. And I got a couple, that's where I put my bead on to start right there. But as you can see, it's pretty uniform going across. And I haven't cleaned it up yet with the wire brush, but that'll make it look a lot better. This side over here, I had a decent little gap there. So I had to fill that in pretty good. And all the way down this side here, this is like my my favorite side. <laughs> got the bottle opener put on there for when you're hanging out because you gotta mine these things quite a bit all day. Went ahead, got the door cut out, got all my trim put on. This old double diamond here, my mom's husband uh, put this on, actually put it on this sissy bar from my old Harley I used to have, I sold, and it's been hanging up, so I figured I'd use that as a spot to put my, um, uh, when this door comes up, it stops it. 
There you go. I had an uncle who passed away when I was about 12 years old. And when you look at this, it's the M and then the W. That's his initials. That's why you got that double diamond there. So it's pretty cool. It means a lot to me. Um, I just ordered this handle off of Etsy, actually. I didn't feel like going through the process of making one because it's, you know, if you have a CNC machine, plasma cutter, and you get you can set your machine up like that, you can cut these handles out and anything else, like really uniform, nice and clean, minimal slag. Um, so I went ahead and just ordered one. I'd like to do one next time. Kind of like, how, you see, I made these hinges too. This is something I'm pretty proud of is make these hinges I made. <coughs> Excuse me. But I've seen guys use the, the, the same material there for a really long handle here. And I kind of wouldn't mind a long handle on my next one, but I'm gonna build one of these for my neighbor down the street, just like the one I got here, same size. And then I'm gonna build um, two shorter ones that are reverse flow. And they're gonna have the square uh, firebox. And then I've got a special thing I do with the plate for the reverse flow that I've never seen done. So hopefully it makes it even more efficient and works even better. But one of my buddies asked me, he said, why such a tall stack? I said, well, why not? The better the, the airflow sucking out of here, the better, more convection you get, the better off your meat's gonna turn out. So talked to this lady last night at this brewery here in town and uh, she's one of the owners. And we were talking and uh, just shooting the shit. My wife, it's called the Goat Brewing Company. My wife loves mountain goats. Got a freaking mountain goat tattoo. They got goats and shit everywhere. Uh, we said we're gonna bring up one of her paintings for them just to have at the place. And then they had a food truck outside. And I asked, what do you guys do? Do you have special vendors that come in or how does that work? And she's like, no, just anybody who wants to come up can come on up. So I said, well, when I get my smoker done, I'm gonna come up there and do some barbecue, blow you all away. So um, that's the plan with this. I'm gonna be cooking in the neighborhood. Hopefully do a few pop-ups like that once it's all done. Now, let me show you on the inside again real quick. So this inside, as you can see, it's freaking huge. It's uh, 47 inches long. Uh, door to door, edge to edge is 43 inches long. Probably put a whole hog in there. Um, but I'm gonna have two racks. The first one's gonna be sitting flush with this and will slide out. And the second one will be a shorter rack, probably about this tall. I think it's gonna be about 16 inches. Um, but that's, what, that's where that one will be too, so you can do a lot of capacity in here. Oh, well, so, um, sorry about the camera work. This plate came off of the edge right here where I cut that out. I'm gonna install it right here for my deflector plate and just weld that on there. That'll give me a little bit more room so I'm not getting that direct heat coming straight up on that meat on that side so I can really spit it out. And it is left hand, uh, side firebox because that's the way it's going to fit on my patio because i still got my master build of course so that's it man it's coming along really good got a few little spots here and there's a very back corner right there that's like a little bead little dot where i can see light coming through where you know like i said i ain't the best but i ain't the worst and i gotta fill um where i cut those valves out still too so i gotta cut those out with a plasma cutter and then get those filled up but other than that i'm pretty proud of it it's coming along pretty good just gonna leave it patinaed like this and get it hot and rub some linseed oil on it and call it good. So that's that. Hope y'all like it. All right, a little bit difficult to film today because I can't find my tripod, but this has been in six hours. Got awesome color on it. Smells really good. Not sure if it's because I actually changed the spray. I came up with this one here. It's got beef broth. Uh, garlic and apple juice in it and it smells really good spraying on there too so bark setting up pretty good you can see it where i pulled the meter out it's juicing right there um but that meter that i bought that that's the internal thermometer deal it just it sucks it just stopped working so it's got to go with the old school one so what i'm gonna do now is throw some butter in on top of this a little bit of beef broth on bottom throw it in the oven at 275 until it's freaking perfect that right there is what it should look like. This is all experimental today. Did some butter on it, some beef tallow, and I'm gonna do a little bit more beef broth in the bottom. And I'm gonna wrap this big fo deep foil pan. That's the most crucial part when I wrap. You gotta have a deep foil pan so nothing's touching on top. And I'm gonna get this thing all wrapped up and thrown in the oven, 275 until it hits about 205, maybe 200. We'll see what it feels like. All right, here we are. So this thing only cooked for eight hours, which is kind of short for a troll pounder, but I did trim off quite a bit, so maybe it was around Ten and a half pounds when I got done with it, but um, I don't know. Do you consider hot and fast two seventy five, or do you consider that like over three three hundred or above? I did two seventy five on this cook today too. Um, I got up at like three forty five yesterday and went hunting, and I was not gonna get up that really good today. wasn't feeling great, so I got up at six. But this thing cooked from six thirty till two thirty, so it was right at that eight hour mark. Um, 
been resting for the last three. I'm really anxious to see how it turned out because I did a couple things differently. Um, I injected it, which I never do. I did um, <laughs> my dog. I did the uh, uh, butter on top, did beef tallow on top, and then I put a little bit of beef broth in the actual thing too. So I'm gonna get it out of here, put it on the um, uh, cutting board, and we're gonna see what it looks like. Right. Ooh, she jiggly. I'll give her that. Got a little jiggle to it. It's not too bad. All right. Already sharpened my knife up. And just go right into it. Ooh, the end's actually really tender too. That's really spread. Sometimes that piece can get a little tough, you know? Ooh, baby. I'm not a nail. That's pretty damn juicy inside. Oh my God. Mm. You know when the end is juicy, the rest of it's gonna be freaking money, so. Go ahead and slice this bad boy up. I said it before in a different video, but I find it satisfying to slice brisket and watch brisket being sliced. So if you like that too, keep watching. If you don't, fast forward. Key is a good, sharp knife and nice, easy strokes. Don't be pushing through here. But it's got just enough, just enough friction on it to make it get a really nice cut. We're not that far into it yet, but I guarantee you this bend test is gonna be, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. What's that thing that this song's about that? That fat, you see that fat is turned, is rendered down perfectly. Mm. This could be my new favorite method. That's no joke. Man, and also to cook that fast and be that juicy, that's hard to beat. It's even got juice coming out of it when I cut it. I haven't had that juicy of a brisket, um, even maybe ever. Shit, this is, <laughs> slice is getting a little thick here. That slice, that slice is actually like a meal, but look at that. If you can see closely on that, the juice, there's like juice in the meat still. Pull test, perfect. Go. I'm gonna do a few more slices here, a little thinner. And then I'm gonna go turn it. Do a couple slices of the fatty end, as y'all Texans call it. Can't wait to cook a brisket in that new smoker. I think it's gonna be awesome. A little burn in right there. Might as well have it. Oh, shit. Mmm. I'm not trying to brag, but. The rub I make too. There's so money on here. All right. That's my favorite slice right there where you get a little bit of that point meat in with the flat. That is awesome. Ooh. This, this brisket had a really funky, uh, like fat line separating the point and the flat that I had to cut a lot of it out because it was just like really weird, like so thick coming through there. There we go. Whew. That's how you do it right there, boys and girls. Nice and juicy. I'm gonna try this fatty end. Mm. That's it. I said it before and I'll say it again. I'm all about trying new techniques, new methods, try to figure out what the best way to do uh, brisket is. There's no perfect way. There's actually no best way, but there's a lot of different ways to get really, really good results. And doing the injection, Waylon, my dog, doing the injection, and then I think maybe adding the butter and the tallow and the wrap. I'm telling you guys, you guys get you a thick, a really deep pan like this. So when you wrap it up, look at me, look at all the juice in there. When you wrap it up that the foil is not touching it, you can retain the bark as you see on here. It stays really nice. So anyway, um, nice smoke ring on there too. All I did was, uh, I, I lay, I, I've been layering pecan and cherry lately. Uh, started off as a hickory guy, I thought I was hickory, but I might do my next cook, cook in oak. Um, but this cherry pecan blend is always the best. I stack it, I do two like pretty good lumps of cherry, like one little bitty layer of charcoal, 
and the, the pecan wood comes in a little bit thicker, so I put a big chunk there, and I just keep layering as it goes up. And then I only cooked for six hours out there, and then two hours in here, rested for three, and it came out freaking awesome. So if you like what you see, please like, please subscribe, share with your friends, try out some stuff. Go back and look at some of my old videos too. I've had a couple of good feedbacks from people who watched my uh, smoked enchiladas video. Did it for family time, game day, and that shit's awesome. And read the description on that one too, because I actually put in what I would do differently, and what I'm gonna do next time I do it to make it even better. So. If you like to see him, like, subscribe, share with your boys. Peace.